Number 10 of the URC, folks. Ulster hosting Lentz, the penultimate game of the regular season. It's Ulster who get a very important win over a much-changed Lentz. The lineup comes down to a John Cooney kick at the death. He gets it to win it for the Ulster men. But we'll go through some key events and some stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts. But, man, what a kick. The crowd absolutely loved that one, and uh, rightly so. As I said, really important game for Ulster. In terms of their position on the log, you know, playoffs positions in that kind of bottom uh, bottom half of the top half, pretty congested. But this win will do Ulster the world of good in terms of um, their playoff ambitions. And then Leinster, big game next week. I mean, a lot of rested players, but still they would have wanted to win this one to get themselves as high on the table as they could as well. Started with a bit of a hiss and a roar, similar to Munster against Edinburgh yesterday. You know, some games take a while to warm up. I think this guy, this game pretty much hit the ground running, which is pleasing to see for me at 6.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning with my coffee and my toast. Um, yeah, got, got me really wide-eyed and bushy-tailed very, very quickly. Simultaneous grounding moment with... Um, Ulster really coming out of the blocks firing, like I said. Uh, Mikey Lowry, I think it was, almost grounded the ball, but it was the same time as a lens to hand, so ends up in the goal line. Drop out, cross kick to that man Lowry again. He was involved early. Um, looks to have potentially scored a try. He gets it, he gets tackled close to the goal line, releases, goes again, he goes over. The ref says he's not released it, but he's clearly released it. But he's not gotten back to his feet when he regained the ball, so he ends up not getting that try and ends up conceding a penalty. But it doesn't matter because they do get the try to convert all that early pressure uh, through the mall, through Rob Herring. It's a scrum penalty, touch, go for the mall, and over. TMO has to check it, but it is all good. So seven points to nil. Really good, you know, Ulster pressure. And to get the points is the reward from all that pressure was cracking. But I still think they'll be pretty disappointed with the scoreline in the first half because they certainly didn't capitalize on the majority of that pressure. And lengths to do what lengths to do, man. Like, I swear, first chance they take, and they, they just put points on you. I mean, Will Connors with the charge down on Billy Burns. Billy Burns is a little bit too casual with the clearance kick. Connors, you know, that's good work rate commitment. You you try to go for that charge down 100 times, you probably don't get many of them. But he goes for it, he gets the charge down, and uh, Natai is able to run the support line to get Leinster on the board. So not having much of the play, probably first entry into the 22. Seven points apiece. And then they take the lead. Like, a minute after... Ulster's been held up down one end. This is what I mean about, I've seen enough Leinster games to know this. Ulster get held up one end, and then the next minute, you got Keenan with like this little half break, Foley with the support line, and uh, boom, Leinster have gone kind of, uh, not quite a 14-pointer, but pretty much length of the field, uh, you know, in a, few, in a few moments. So seven points Ulster, 14 points Leinster. Ulster did reply with a penalty to make it 14-10, but 14-10 at halftime, I think they'll be pretty disappointed. Especially when you consider Leinster have lost Natai and Tommy O'Brien in that first half as well. So they've had to bring on, you know, it's a bit of a disjointed back line for the Leinster guys. So, yeah, scrums were a bit messy as well. The ref had to give them a bit of a lecture. That was a bit of a drag. I agree with Royal Nugent uh, for once in my life, uh, where he basically said he loves scrums, but he wants them to, to not take all day to be set, basically. He didn't quite say that in as many words, but that's that was his meaning. So, yeah, halftime stats. Ulster have had 59% possession, 65% territory. They've had more clean breaks, and Leinster have knocked it on eight times to Ulster's four, and yet somehow Leinster are in front. So that's what I mean about Ulster. I think we'll be a bit disappointed. Second half started pretty much the same way as the first in terms of a bunch of Ulster pressure. Um, Leinster conceded a penalty at the breakdown, which Ulster decided to kick a goal, which they got to bring it to a one-point game, 14 points to 13. Leinster, though, from that point, did seem to get a bit of a wake-up call. They managed to get themselves a bit of possession, managed to go through some phases, and then once the forwards got the ball, they were not letting the backs have it. Uh, eventually, after quite some time, it was uh, Alan Alatoa who was able to go around 53 minutes. And it kind of goes way back to Will Connors winning a, um, a relatively soft penalty from Ulster's point of view. Like Ulster just, you know, a bunch of carries around about the halfway line, slightly in their own half. But Will Connors getting that turnover meant field position kind of surrendered. So Leinster capitalized really well. 21-13 kind of extended their lead. And then um, maybe kind of a reverse of the first half where we see a little bit of a kind of against the runner play try. This time it's Ulster, though, who get the try. Uh, Harry Byrne, a little bit too casual. 
you know, Leinster have got a bunch of position. They're going through phases. And then Stockdale with the intercept with the gas. Um, I mean, credit to Foley for trying to chase him down, but he was never going to catch him. Uh, so that brings it back to a one-point game, 20 points to 21. Game absolutely on a knife edge. Bit of handbags on 61 minutes, which I think Royal Nugent was enjoying as well, but it's good to see a bit of feeling between the sides when you get these kind of, you know, rivalry matches. You want to see a bit of feeling in it, and there was a bit of feeling. Uh, Leinster had conceded a penalty at the scrum, and the crowd was loving that moment, loving every second of it. So the big boys, you know, asking each other how their day is going. Yeah, a uh, bit of feeling. Um, bit of a try saver from Mikey Lowry as well on Max Deegan. That was an impressive one because there's a big si uh, size difference between those two fellas. Deegan trying to go over on the blind side in the corner. Lowry doing enough to put him into touch. That was a key moment. And then Stewart, who's come on for Ulster, has a kind of a, co a comical moment where he tries to pinch a ball at the back of a Leinster ruck, pretty much on his own goal line. Grabs it, and then the ref's like, no, you're not doing that. And he puts it back down as if to say, like, no, no, sorry, I didn't I didn't mean to do that. But he still concedes the penalty. But then a minute later, he's the one who gets a breakdown penalty on Ulster's line. So a couple of key moments, I think, saved the game for Ulster. Lowry and uh, Stuart, both of them with those key moments. And then, uh, yeah, that man, John Cooney, like I said, the crowd wanted it. Like, Nathan Doak and Cooney were on the field. You thought maybe Doak, but Cooney was always going to be the man, um, going to be the man to take that kick, I guess. Uh, penalty conceded from Leinster, just slightly in their own half, and Cooney, the crowd goes absolutely silent for his long shot at goal. They chanted his name moments before, but then silence, and he slots it. What a hell of a kick! Edge of your seat stuff. There's only like three, two minutes to play at that point, um, and then yeah, Ulster are able to hold on at the end so as i said really crucial win for them uh in terms of getting away from that kind of thing they were on like 49 points getting away from that 49 point position where there are several other teams kind of there or thereabouts so uh yeah really really important win position finishes 52 48 and territory 54 46 so slightly in ulster's favor but not as much as that first half so leinster you certainly had a bit more ball in the second run meters 312 to 288 not much in it clean breaks though seven to three to ulster uh, penalties considered pretty low, 7-6 to six overall in the course of the game. That is pretty low. Individuals, Dave McCann, 19 tackles. That's a huge shift. Alan Alatoa and uh, James Ryan had 16 for Leinster. Addison was dangerous, three clean breaks and six defenders beaten. But um, yeah, uh, URC's only got one regular season round to go in a couple of weeks. Leinster will be hosting Connacht. And uh, that'll be after the Champions Cup final, honestly, obviously. And um, yeah, Ulster go away to Munster which is really with the four Munster and why you felt like this was a crucial game for Ulster to pick up four points and they got it done. But yeah, you guys let us know your thoughts. Crack and start to my day. You guys let us know um, what you thought of it and um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.